Hello. I've been out here tinkering with this stuff. As you can see, this lens has no lens in it. I bought this pack of camera lenses at uh, one thrift store a few days ago. Paid a dollar for the whole set. These are macro lenses, and I was looking at them and realized there's this groove on both sides, and the inside just screws out. And they're just hollow. The inside diameter for the lenses were 50 millimeter, which, if you guys will remember, I've got the brazing goggle lenses, which are 50 millimeters. So I've already made up the here's the clear one, just a clear glass, and then here's the brazing goggle. This is a number five shade brazing goggle, and this will be my protective lens for that. It's just clear glass. But now I got the protective stuff to, or the lenses for the camera I wanted. And I've got the carriers and stuff now, because I just use these. The set came with two sets of the ultraviolet and two sets of the polarizing so I just my camera already has a um, UV and U infrared cut filter on it already the telescope lens which the one on the camera is inch and a quarter telescope thread which comes out actually 28 millimeters by 0 0.6 millimeter pitch thread and these are 52 millimeters by 0 0.75 millimeter thread the only thing is I cannot change the change gears on my lathe to do transposing gears and stuff because of the way my lathe is made so I'm going to have to do the threading a little differently I've already got all the dimensions already measured out that I need and I have a piece of aluminum somebody was using it for welding practice I think because it's pretty hideous but it'll be thick enough to make the adapter out of. We'll get this all faced off and get it roughed out, get everything to size, and I'll bring you back and I'll show you how I'm going to do the metric threads on the lathe that you cannot do metric threads. Right, let's go get started. That should do. I'll clean it up afterwards. I'm just trying to get all the booger marks out of it from welding and stuff. Because I'll use a high speed steel on it. 
spool on it rather than the carbide, then I'll get a better finish. For now though, pull this out and start rounding it up. I need a little over an inch and a quarter. Pretty decent finish. I think the carbide does not like this stuff though. Oh well. Now to switch the jaws out and I'll flip it and face it off. We'll drill it out and start boring it. Okay, should be at the right size for the small diameter. And for this diameter here, we gotta go to two inches. 
inches and 15 thousandths. This is 7075 aluminum, and I absolutely hate this stuff. I get a lot of it coming in from working on airplanes. A lot of people want it, stuff made out of that. Looks like I am about 8 thou under, so that'll be easy enough to take out. And I'll set up the reading. Now that we got this all roughed out, now it's time to start cutting threads. Take you over the bench real quick and I'll explain what we're going to do. Okay, on my lathe, you select the threads per inch by moving the idler gear on a up against a step gear using bushings. You have 12, 24, and 48 teeth on the idler gear, or on the step gear. And on my lathe, I usually run it at the finest mine can do, because I have the 32 tooth gear going into the gearbox. So it's 30 threads per inch. When I had the indicator stop set up on my lathe ages ago, it, I actually was curious how much at 30 threads per inch that it, the lathe actually traveled through the power feed. So I did it up and found out my lathe would do a four thousandths feed rate at 30 threads per inch. So Thirty, hundred twenty thousandths per revolution. If it was one to, if it was at one thread sprint, it would be hundred twenty thousandths through the gearbox. So we'll have to remember hundred twenty thousandths. Now the, I'm going to do the in, the internal thread first, which is zero point six millimeters. So. 0.6 divided by 25.4 which comes out at 23.6 thou so we'll just round it up to 24 thou that's nearest one so 
so point divide by point o two four there's five threads per inch so on my lathe if I set the lever on the 48 tooth stud on the third position it'll come out to right at 0 0.6 millimeters it's kind of a cheat and it does work because it's how I did the threads on the camera already for the 0.75 I have 0.75 divided by 25.4 so 29.5 so 30 thou rounded up so 120 thou divided by 30 thou is 4 threads per inch so it's just a matter of I cut the 0.6 millimeter thread using the third lever here and it comes out four threads per inch so number one so we'll just cut the threads using that way hopefully you guys understood that so move the over change out the tumbler gear and stuff and we'll get to cutting the threads on this thing Okay. Take this gear. Take these. Kind of annoying to get this on and off but it's not that bad sometimes okay it's that one it's kind of hard to hold everything together while putting this on just right them out there So now, now the first one to cut, we're going to cut the inside, so, there we are, there's number three. So now if I lock the power feed and turn it over by hand, just disengage the motor, it will cut 0 0.6 millimeter pitch thread. Because I'm using the gearbox, I can't disengage the thing, otherwise I lose the position of the threads. I'll take the lens off the camera real quick and we'll test it, and we'll see where we are. Looks like it's just starting to try to go in. So I'll go one more pass. Go back to zero. I feel a bit more.
That should be it right there. And this is this is why I wish I had reverse on the lathe. A reversible motor. A little snug but that's the way I want it that's the way the rest of the camera threads are and it'll loosen up as it gets worn in there we are seat it up against there's 0 0.6 millimeter pitch thread on my camera I had the ring just threaded because I didn't want to do a thread like the one I'm going to do because I wasn't sure if it would actually work so I made a male thread to go into this one and just put the lens on backwards so now it has a stop on the ring so it doesn't go all the way up on me and now I switch it from 3 to 1 now we're cutting 0 0.75 millimeter pitch threads. There we're touching. I need to feed out 10 thou to cut the thread here. Or the difference between the threads were and thou so that should cut the full depth threads That should be it. Move it way back here. Look at the lens in here. There was a thing going on with the threads on that other one, so I just grabbed another one and it screwed right in, so. There we go. I hate this camera's threads, or these lenses' threads. There we are. It's up tight against it. Yeah, it's up tight. Now I'll flip it, just deburr the thing a little bit. And we're done. I gotta break this corner here real quick, and that's it. I'll give it a little bit of a polish up so that it looks nice. Should disengage that. There we are. That looks a lot better. I'm gonna go quench this and cool it down and buff it with the buffing wheel real quick. Okay, I got it all cleaned up. It's 
Still got a little bit of the roughness from that first pass. I never went back and cleaned it up, but it doesn't really matter. The threads all look good except for this one, which got a little chewy on the last part. This thread looks really good. Threads on real easily. Okay. I'm going to switch to my phone and I'll finish up the video from there because it's hard to record on the camera while trying to show what I'm doing with the camera. So I'll be back. Hopefully the audio and video isn't too bad. It's kind of hard to record with the phone here because it's zoomed in so far. But here is the adapter ring. It looks real nice. It screws in real easy. It's a nice, there's no play in the threads. It butts up against the end there. And there's the camera I have. My ring that I made originally, I just super glued it. It's made of brass. It has the 0.6 millimeter pitch threads on it. But I have a UV IR cut folder for a telescope. Just screws on. And now, And now I can use the lenses and stuff for the cameras on my little GoPro clone. I've got the freezing goggle lens, just a piece of glass, which I've got fingerprints and oil all over it, so it's got a film. I've got plus two and plus four macro lenses, and a plus one. I can only use two at a time, so. Yeah, and I got one extra that the I all I have to do is unscrew it. I got a didinium lens coming for this thing, a 50 millimeter didinium lens for it gets rid of the orange color and fire, so you'll be able to see inside of the furnace without having to worry about flames shooting out everywhere and blinding the view of the crucible and furnace. But, yeah. I think it looks pretty good and it turned out pretty nice. I may paint the back of it black just with some paint or something just to keep the glare or keep it from creating a glare or reflection inside. I think it's pretty good. Okay, I think I'm going to call it. Thanks for watching. See ya.